This screencast concerns how to make a hypothesis test about a population mean when the standard deviation of the population is known. It's using an example called the Max Flight Golf Test. So the data file is called Golf Test and it's on page 370 of the Anderson, Sweeney and Williams text. The first thing to do is to enter in some basic data. First of all, we need to know the sample size. So in cell C4, we type sample size, and then that goes into cell D4. We make Excel count it equals count, open brackets, A2 colon A51. And you can notice that the uh, number of data has been uh, compressed so that there are more data, but we're just showing here from A2 to A51. The other ones are hidden. Return, and we see that the sample size is 50. Next, we need the sample mean. And so we use equals and then average A2 to A51 uh, uh, as before. I put in the wrong mistake. They're very easy to make a mistake. So A51. Next, uh, we need to put in the population standard deviation. So we type in population standard deviation. Now this is being given to us. Not always the case, but in this case it's been given. And the population standard deviation is 12. So enter 12. Next, hypothesized value. So this is the value that we just hypothesize. We say, test against this value. Maybe it's what the manufacturer is claiming. And in this case, it's 295. I think that's the number of yards of flight of the golf ball. The first calculation we need to get is the standard error, which you will recall is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So equals, and then we want to have the population standard deviation, so that's cell D7, divided by, and then we tell SQRT, which means square root, Make sure you get that, that's right, SQRT, and then the population, uh, the sample size, which is 50. So type in D4, close brackets, enter, and so we can find that our standard error is 1.697. Next, we need our test statistic test statistic, which is the z-score we're going to be comparing against. So, in algebra, that would be our x-bar minus the hypothesized value minus uh, divided by the standard error. So we go equals open brackets because we're going to be dividing the sample mean which is 29.7 so that goes as D5 minus the hypothesized value of 295 goes as D8 close brackets and then divide by our standard error which is in the cell above so we click on that and cell D10, I have it, and we get 1.53. That's far too many. We don't need so many decimal places. So reduce that to three places after the decimal. Next, we need to calculate the p-value for the lower tail.
we ask Excel to give us an ORM SDIS, the normal distribution for a test statistic Z. So it's looking up in the equivalent of its tables, what is that Z value? So we click on here, it's in cell D11, close brackets, and it gives us point 9372. So if you can look it up in your own tables, you would see the same value. The p-value for the upper tail is 1 minus that. So it goes equals 1 minus, click on that, D13, and we have 0 0.0628. So those are the two p-values, p-value upper tail and lower tail. Now, if we wanted to get the p-value for a two-tail test, p-value two-tail, that is saying <clears throat> is or is not <clears throat> equal to the hypothesized mean, we go equals two asterisk means time, and then take the minimum, MIN for minimum of these two values. So D13, comma, D14, close brackets. So take the minimum of those two and multiply by two is what that equation is saying. And there we have our two-tailed value, which can be compared against alpha, to see whether or not we should reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis.